those who will go to hell part 3 first lesson st luke chapter 3 verse 11 second lesson first john chapter 3 verse 17 golden text st matthew chapter 25 verses 45 to 46 quote brethren when you read the first second and third lessons you will actually see what is now at stake the subject of our discussion must have become apparent to you many people have construed hell to be a literal place of torment where fire is stored up and people are and people descend there to be burnt alive in this revelation it is clearly shown that hell is a condition of perpetual punishment a damned condition a condition of wickedness torture and death whereas heaven is eternal joy peace and happiness there is everlasting life and everlasting punishment therefore in this world there is eternal punishment and eternal life the whole world is placed in a damned condition of eternal punishment from adam till now mankind in general has been plunged into hell fire in times past some of you had believed that your forefathers were taken to heaven at death but may i ask where were they when they were alive some of you talk of the rich man having a better place in heaven this is impossible for the scriptures say that the minding of the flesh means death how then can rich man have a place in heaven christ spoke vehemently that it will be difficult for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. How can a rich man have peace of mind when he is busy thinking how to increase his wealth and secure the ones he has acquired? Since he has rejected the word of God, he is a saboteur. For the word of God says, if you have two garments, you must give one to the person who has none. But a rich man has more than two, and he is keeping them to himself. He has much naira with, with him. But on the, the wayside are the needy and the poor who do not have a cobble. But he fails to share with them. There are others who build houses but refuse to give to those who are hanging around but boldly write on the building house to let to whom does he want to let out his house he wants more money from the needy who cannot afford to pay the rent for a house such people are in hell the way to heaven is open and here it is that if you have two things you must give one to the person who has none otherwise you are in hellfire all those who refuse to practice the first lesson of this gospel are in hell right now what is called the kingdom of god is the word of god and the first bible lesson has shown you what brotherhood is therefore let it become known to all of you that anyone who fails to practice the first lesson is deep in hellfire. Some people may say that they refrain from fornication, adultery, drinking of wine and taking of drugs or injections and telling lies. That may be true, but what about giving out those things that you have more than one? To another who has none this is the greatest sin it is the sin of selfishness greed 
and covetousness. It is a state of vor it is a state of vor voraciousness which is punishable by eternal torment in hellfire. That is why it would be highly impossible for a rich man to make a showing in the kingdom of God. The children of God are mocked for being generous and for practicing this lesson of giving one of the two things that they have to another who has none. They are regarded as foolish for their hospitality. But I tell you that it is an act of wisdom on your part, for yours is the kingdom of God. Anyone who fails to practice this lesson, I repeat, has no place in the kingdom of God. Does this not identify to you those who are in hell? Certainly it does. No rich person in the world who fails to practice this scriptural text has peace. He is in hellfire. Inform your parents, relations and the entire world who reject this principle of the scriptures that they are in hell. A way of salvation is now open to all. Use this chance to get out of hell. If you realize that your name is in hell due to the fact that you have not practiced this gospel, do so now and use this chance to erase your name from hell and have it written in the kingdom of God for your eternal salvation. Some fancy preachers and misguided individuals say that the statement of Christ was a parable when he said, Go and sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and come, be my follower and you will have a portion in the kingdom of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated this biblical principle himself. He distributed all that he had to the poor. His faith, his power, his love, his wisdom. He willingly shared and distributed equally to those in need. For your sake, he, though being rich, becomes poor so that you may be rich. The scripture says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because everything in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the show and the showy and the showy display of one's means of life does not originate with the Father but originates in the world. Think of it yourself. Your suitcases are full with different types of sutans, costly ones and the less costly ones, old and new. Among them also are other dresses which perhaps you may not want to use now or in the future, but there are your brothers and sisters without a sutan or something to put on and you are shouting hallelujah what is the meaning of your jubilation the things of this world have blinded such people just as the word of god says now that the gospel is unveiled among those who are perishing among those who are perishing yes those in hell but as for those who desire salvation they have taken this chance to practice this gospel and get saved during the time of the apostles the record shows that there was not one among them in need why for all those who believed and were possessors of houses or fields would sell them and bring the values of the things sold and deposit them at the feet of the apostles. But, of course, 
a certain man named Adonias sold his position and secretly held back a part of the money for himself if and for himself and gave the apostle the rest today we have the Ananias class people who are selfish and greedy who would not share their so their surplus with others you may not be a fornicator an adulterer or a liar etc but bear in mind that today you cannot be more fortunate than Ananias who was unable to get away with his devices he was condemned to hell immediately the, an the angelic messengers told Lot that his household do not that his household not to look behind when they were getting out of Sodom and Gomorrah to look back would mean that they were interested in the things that they left behind. It would be a sin. But alas, the wife looked back. She was condemned to hell instantly. You also remember Judas Iscariot. His mind was his mind was bent on riches. This led him astray headlong into everlasting punishment in hell. Do not be deceived, for all what you possess now are not yours. It was written that in the later time a prophet would be raised up, and whosoever would not listen to that prophet would be cut off from among the people. Whatever you are, be you a doctor, a lawyer, and whatever position in life that you must attain, if you do not give out one of the two things that you have to the one that has none, you are now in hellfire. It is because you allow these worldly things to occupy your minds that you cannot please God the way you should do. What did you come to this world with and what are you going away with? Who makes you to differ from another? Indeed, indeed, what do you have that you did not receive? If now you indeed receive it, why do you boast as though you did not receive it? God does not say that you should not be rich, for he is the one who bestows all these things on you. You are the storekeepers, and things kept in your care are for you to distribute to the needy. It is out of selfishness, lust for these material things that you are not kept under eternal torment in hellfire that you are now kept under eternal torment in hellfire to possess cars and other material things of this world is not in itself satanic but it is the love that you have for these things that makes them worldly you must give out one of the two things that you have to the needy in order to gain salvation in God's kingdom. God has given this instruction to the rich men of this world that those who are rich in the present system of things should not be high-minded, not to rest their hope on uncertain riches, but on God. Who finishes them with good works to be liberal, ready to share, safely treasuring up for themselves a fine foundation for the future in order that they may get firm hold on the real life? This is your passport to heaven, otherwise you are in hellfire. 
Read the first Bible lesson again. First lesson, St. Luke chapter 3, verse 11. In reply, he said to them, Let the man that has two garments share with the man that has none, and let him that has things to eat do the same. That is the beginning and the end of the gospel. Abram was used to entertaining strangers and he eventually entertained angels. God gave him one child and later demanded that the child should be offered as sacrifice unto him. Abram obeyed. If Abram had disobeyed God, that would have led him to hellfire. Lot was also liberal and generous. That was why he willingly entertained those strangers without knowing that they were angels. Liberality is required from all those who are longing for this kingdom of God. You must be liberal even with your beauty or handsomeness. You must mix freely with the unfortunate ugly people. Be ready to share with them your beauty thereby consoling them of their unfortunate condition. By doing so, you will not be criticized by the ugly ones since you accept them with open arms. God does not use two persons to save the world, but he uses only one. If you are blessed with wisdom, children, or with any wealth of this world, you must be liberal and ready to share with those in need. Otherwise, you are in hellfire. For example, you may be blessed with many children, but only one is your child. The one that listens to you and obeys you at all times is the one that you love most. Although others may be with you, Notwithstanding, only that one is your own. Therefore, be liberal. You must distribute these children to those who do not have, so that you may be saved with those children. You may build so many houses, but it is only one house that you will live in. That house will have so many rooms, but it is only one room that will be your own. You may have many beds and many pillows on these beds, but it is only on one bed and that you will sleep and only on one pillow that you will lay your head upon. Think of it right now. You have many dresses and sutans, but it is only one sutan that you are using now why not give the rest to those who have none can you use two spoons to eat at the same time look how many spoons you have in your box you have so many tables and chairs but it is only one table and one chair that you can use at a time why not secure your life by giving out those things which you do not use to those in need. From these examples given, you can see that polygamists, polygamists are rebels. You may marry so many wives, but only one is your legal wife. Why not give out the others to other men who have none? You can only put up with one wife in one night while others, while other concubines are kept without someone to care for them that same night. This is selfishness. It is theft and is punishable by fire in hell. Solomon committed this offense. You who boast of marrying so many wives you will agree that you can only eat from a wife at a time. It may be said that there are other men and so you women greedily 
kept hold. You women greedily get hold of them, sister. Only one is your own. You must be liberal. The word of God is also applicable to the polygamists. Take only one wife and give out the others to other people. If you are selfish to accumulate concubines, you are in hellfire. You women and girls who are keeping thousands of boyfriends at all corners, you must keep only one and release other boys for those women and girls who are not yet successful in this contest. The same thing applies to those who are holding more than one job. You are a civil servant and at the same time you are a private businessman, a contractor, etc. Why not be liberal and share the other jobs with those who are applicants? In this light of truth, you must be ready to share with others in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, this is what is troubling the nations of mankind today. One man has a hundred jobs, one man has hundred plots of land, while there are millions of people without a job and without allocation of a plot, even though they qualify for it. It also applies to occupying positions. You can imagine a man who is a chairman or president in five different meetings. Can you? Only one post is yours. You must give out the other four posts to those who have none. If you, are a, if you are selfish and want to be Mr. President everywhere, you must know that you are in hellfire. If you are not liberal and generous, then writing Jesus, Jesus on your doorpost will not save you. This is the time to practice the word of God so that you may enjoy everlasting life in God's kingdom. It is easy to deceive someone that you love God, but God cannot be mocked. How? While on your way, you come across the beggars by the wayside and the needy who beckon to you for help, but you say that you are running to meet Jesus. Do you all know Jesus? Today, many say that they do not joke with money, children, their jobs, even their lives. What then are you to joke with? Abram did not consider his child as too important. That was why he readily, he readily obeyed God. When God asked him to sacrifice his child, our Lord Jesus Christ, did, our Lord Jesus Christ did not did not even consider his life as something important to him. In fact, he gambled with life. He joked with his mother and father while there, while here on ministerial activities. Therefore, brethren. Anyone that has this world's means of living and does not give out his extras to the needy one does not love God either. As long as you fail to share or to give out one of the two things that you have to the one that has none, or food for the one that is hungry, you are in hellfire. Faith without work is dead. What is work? It is liberality. Being ready to share. Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me more than all these things? Peter answered, Lord, you know that I have affection for you. Christ told him, Feed my, feed my little sheep. Who are these sheep? They are the needy, the poor, the afflicted, depressed widows and orphans. In the writings of Paul and James, they both wrote about the caring and honoring of the widows and orphans. For instance, 
when you go to preach to someone who is without food or clothing and after your sermon you say may God be with you how you must be practical you must be liberal you must be hospitable they need the necessities for their bodies this is where works come in to meet fate whom do you think the false prophets are they are those type of fancied preachers who are not interested in the physical needs of the needy they are also the false apostles those who are selfish lustful and greedy with the things of this world such persons are the antichrist may we have the second bible lesson read second lesson first john chapter 3 verse 17 but whoever has this world's means of supporting life and beholds his brother having need and yet shut the door of his tender compassion upon him in what way does the love of God remain in him? Brethren, the context of this lesson is clear and practical. Anything short of this keeps one under eternal punishment. Take a look at these so many churches today with wealthy people. Do you see those huts built around the city and are labeled the house of God? Even the churches are debtors. Such wealthy people in the midst such wealthy people in their midst are in hell's fire. For instance, in a function there may be levy of one naira for everyone. The rich will pay the one naira and expect the poor to do the same. Such a rich person is mocking God. Any person that has this world means of living and is not liberal has no love of God in him. It is written that anyone to whom much is given, much will be demanded from him. If it is money, wisdom, or any wealth that you are blessed with, much more will be demanded from you. If you fail to comply with this demand, you are a rebel. Of what use is it for God to bless you with all things? But you fail to honor God with these things. You are the storehouse kept in the stewardship of God. Therefore, you must not shut the door of compassion to the needy. You must do this indiscriminately. God has kept you in this position as intermediaries to distribute to the poor and needy people that you come across if god gives you truth love self-control faith and hope you must be liberal with these qualities given to you by god to those who do not have otherwise you are in hellfire therefore others who would not go to people's homes or eat the food of their of other people or touch things belonging to others in order to avoid trouble such people who are self-centered are likened to the unfaithful stewards who buried their talents and were kept under torment for doing so paul was a lawyer but because of this gospel he decided to share his knowledge with the needy and because of this action he converted many people to Christ. You may be a driver but you expect someone to hire you. You are be paid fat sum of money before you serve. Such action or behavior is usually shown by children of, per of perdition. This text does not mention anybody's name. 
but simply says that whosoever has this world means of supporting life and behold his brother in need when it says this world means for supporting life it refers to all possible means for supporting life what you have and not what you haven't what is not valuable to you is valuable to others and what you have in plenty is the luck of others you must therefore seek the welfare of others in order to fulfill the word of god if you fail to help the poor and needy if you shut your door of compassion upon others in need you have denied god of these things on your way you come across someone with his cartel punctured the service of god would want you to give out that spare tire of yours or if he is short of fuel and you have some reserve you must give out that reserve fuel to you of yours you must give out that reserve fuel of yours do not think whether your tire will get punctured or the way do not think that your tire will get punctured on the way or whether you will run run short of petrol you must have hope that the father will do his work if you pass by the fellow who is in dire need of assistance when you have your spear tire and and reserve fuel with you you are in fact running into hellfire this new kingdom of god requires liberality do not wait for invitation to help whenever you meet the poor and needy no matter what family tribe or nationality they come from show them that tender compassion as much as is within your power you are not told to give more than what you have you are not required to beg people or to ask god to give you more things in order to assist others you must understand that there is no child of god that is poor all as long as god their father is not poor you must be contented with what you have all members of your body are valuable treasures and wealth there are those without eyes then you who have eyes and can see will be in a position to help those without sight your wealth is in this case your your sight the same thing applies to hands legs etc good health is another wealth you can use your good health to help the sick you may be rich in dreams visions prophecies good voice songs wisdom etc you must then use all these things to help others when to help others who are in need or lacking of them you are privileged to have this truth preached to you with this your faith is increased and you are now rich with the message of life go out with this truth and help others to share this same message the bible says whoever has this world's means of supporting life if you have love help others who have no love the world today is looking for truthful and faithful people go to them and be of help for i do not mean that it should be hard or you or it does not mean that it should be hard for you and easy for others but that by means of equalizing your surplus just now might offset their deficiency you must abound in this kind of giving no one lights a, lights a lamp and places it under a bushel 
but is placed on top of the lampstand. But if you fail to do this to others, it means that you have failed to do it to God himself, and this will keep you under punishment. May we have the golden text read. Golden text, St. Matthew chapter 25, verses 45 to 46. Then he will answer them with these words, Truly I say unto you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of these least ones, you did not do it to me. And these will depart into everlasting cutting off, but the righteous one into everlasting life. As long as you have this world means of supporting life and you fail to share with others, you are under eternal punishment. No, you have seen those who are going to hell and to everlasting punishment. They are those who shut the door of compassion against the needy. They are the selfish and greedy persons of this generation. There is no one who will say that he has not seen the truth. All mankind on the earth are brotherhood. God and his Christ are brotherhood. The animate and inanimate things are all brotherhood. Therefore, show the same compassion and help. <coughs> Excuse me. Show the same compassion and help anyone that you see in need with whatever means of supporting this life that is within your reach. When you see those of those on the wayside, the blind, the lame, the crippled, those in hospital, clinics, prison camps, those in affliction and tribulation, it is your duty to help and assist them. This is your chance to get out of hellfire by heeding to this timely instruction. Use this chance now to erase your name from hell by practicing this gospel. Those who practice this gospel are those who will inherit this kingdom to eternity. If you are disturbed in mind and you lack peace, it means that you are not liberal. You are lacking love. This is sin on your path and you are definitely in hellfire. If you use your wealth to help others, you will be compensated with salvation from God. Many people who have money hate themselves. In fact, their children are not cared for and their wives are not well fed in the least. That is why such rich persons have no share in this kingdom, for they know not Christ. This is the time to practice this gospel. If it is a very small child that requires help, give it, for by so doing, you are doing it to God. People suffer because they fail to help others in need. God has abundantly supplied you with all good things. Then share it with others. This is the order of the day for your eternal salvation. If you are blessed with riches, do not think that God loves you more than the one that does not have. If you are given a submissive wife, do not boast as if God loves you more than the one who has a stubborn wife. Use this chance to help others in order to be blessed by God. Many people in brotherhood have peace of mind and enjoy the blessings of God because they are generous, hospitable and liberal. While the avaricious ones are still in hellfire now, if you decide now that all what you have belongs to the Father, then you have no problems at all. You will not be selfish and greedy over them. Therefore, brethren, go back and sell all that you have and give to the poor and rededicate yourself if and rededicate yourself to this kingdom 
Brethren, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.